I was sleeping in the car's passenger seat, and all of a sudden, my husband Kevin threw me out of the car. You're just an ATM machine for me. If I get to use your money, then I don't need you anymore. You think that I'm gonna do something for you just because it's our wedding anniversary? Quit dreaming, you annoying creep! It was in a dark forest filled with mountains, and I was thrown out on a road that had not even been paved yet. The dress I had put on to get to the fancy hotel was torn, and I was injured by the gravel ground. My husband looked at me and mocked me as I expressed in pain. <laughs> What a look you have on your face! It feels so good to see you like that. Now, just go home on your own like that. Bye. Thinking back to this incident, I was such a fool for believing in my husband. My name is Natalie. A year ago, I got married to Kevin, who I met at our company that we both worked at. In the beginning. When I first met him, Kevin was very kind, trustworthy, and nice. My mother-in-law Mary was also kind, and at that time, I thought that we all would live happily together after our marriage. Right up until just before we got married, I wanted to balance between work and house chores, but my husband wanted me to be a full-time housewife, so. I agreed to his idea, but as soon as the three of us moved in together after our marriage, my mother-in-law began to bully me frequently. Oh, Natalie, the bill for living expenses came here. Please hurry up and pay it as soon as possible, and please make sure to buy more daily necessities like laundry detergents, soaps, shampoos, and food. Oh. I thought you and Kevin were supposed to also pay for the living expenses. What are you saying? We have taken you in as Kevin's wife, and we are letting you live here as our family. So it's only natural that you should be the one to pay all of that. Besides, it's a housewife's job to buy all the groceries, isn't it? Oh, don't tell me that you're asking me to do it. I. I understand. Oh, I'm really scared now. What a horrible wife, trying to make an old woman like me work so hard around the house. As I turned my back around her, I could hear her complaining. So I moved to another room as if to escape her complaints. I then let out a huge sigh. I feel so uncomfortable every day. And as soon as I'm alone, I always let out a huge sigh, and then I open my bank book. The savings I had worked so hard to save while I was working before I married Kevin were decreasing very fast. Seeing this, I feel depressed once again. Just then, the door to my room opens with a huge bang. Oh, oh yes. I have to go out tomorrow, Natalie. So, could you lend me some money? Huh? What? It's all fine, right? I mean, you have a lot of savings, don't you? Well, my savings are not infinite either. Why don't you work for yourself and enjoy your hobbies with your own money that you earn? After I said that, I realize, I realize that I just went against her, and that was a mistake. Because now, Mary will start complaining nonstop, and it would be a huge hassle for me now. Oh my God! I can't believe you would talk to me like that, and I'm the one who welcomed you into our family without any hesitation. How insane can you be? Just give me the money already. If you can't listen to me, you can leave this house right now. You know. Oh, hey! With that, Mary snatched my bank book from me and ran away at once. She said that she's an old woman herself, but running away and moving very fast like that—she's not an old woman at all. 
she's full of energy. She doesn't even do her own chores at home and she forces everything onto me. And Kevin, on the other hand, Natalie is indeed a good wife for me. She is a very serious and good housewife who takes care of the house very well. Outside the house, he'd act friendly with everyone around him, saying things like that. But when he's back in the house, things are completely different. Natalie, I have to take a taxi for work tomorrow, so give me money for the taxi fee. Oh, and give me lunch money too. Kevin, you work and earn enough money, so can't you pay for your own fee for the taxi or pay for your own lunch? What are you talking about? That's my money, and I get to use my money for my own hobbies. Natalie, you're a full time housewife, so that means that you're no different than our housekeeper, so you should be the one paying. Duh! It's true that Kevin has a low monthly income, so I have to cooperate with him to some extent. But I can't have him expect me to pay for all the living expenses, rent, and everything else. I wonder if Kevin even h a v e any pride in himself as a man. When I got sick, both Kevin and Mary didn't take care of me. They would always ask me for money. And never help me with any house chores. I can't really live like this anymore. I wonder if I should consider divorce. I kept on thinking this to myself, but I couldn't take the courage to step forward into divorce. Then one day. Hey, I heard that the celebrity who you're a big fan of is going to hold a dinner show at a nearby hotel soon. It's almost our wedding anniversary, anyways, so. Do you want to go to the dinner show? Is that true? Of course I want to go. I knew you would say that. Then, please make a reservation for both of us. Yeah, sure. He even remembered our anniversary. He'd always treat me like a housekeeper, but deep down, Kevin is actually very sweet. I should be more open minded and accept him for who he is. I immediately made a reservation for the two of us and bought two tickets. It was tickets that I could get without requiring names and other information, so getting the tickets were no big deal. And then the day of the dinner show came. The day I had been looking forward to had arrived. I was so excited to put on my dress and makeup and dress up for the occasion. I hadn't really felt like this for a very long time now. Hey, hurry up. We're leaving soon. If we don't leave soon, we won't make it. Okay, I'm almost ready. Once I got ready and we were just about to leave. Oh, I'm so sorry. I also have somewhere to go, so please let me get in the car with you both. Saying that, Mary also got on the car quickly because she had somewhere to go as well. We had about three hours before the dinner show started. I wanted to arrive at the dinner show with plenty of time to spare, but I was a little nervous that something might happen with Mary on the way to the dinner show. But I didn't want to waste any more time arguing about it here with them. So I had no choice but to leave together with Mary. I was the one who drove the car. But after about an hour of driving, Kevin began to say this. Aren't you exhausted from all the driving? I'll drive instead, so why don't you just sleep next to me? Yeah, Natalie, why don't you just rest next to Kevin? Well, if you both insist, then I will rest. Thank you. We then stopped by at the nearest gas station to exchange the seats. I had no idea that Mary could be even that kind to me. I had decided to take up on their offer and take a nap in the passenger seat next to Kevin. Sometime later, I was awakened by a jolt to my body with a loud bang sound. Ouch! And when I looked around, all I saw were trees all around me. 
to my surprise, I was lying around in a forest filled with mountains. The loud bang sound I heard earlier was Kevin and Mary closing the car door. Wait, what the heck is happening? Oh, well, I'm going to enjoy today's dinner show just with my mother, instead of with you. And as for you, you worthless creep, we'll have to get out of the car. What? Why? Oh my, Natalie, you say the funniest things. The tickets were only reserved for the two of us. It's your fault, Natalie, for not booking for your own ticket. Well, come on, let's go then, Kevin. We're running out of time, so let's hurry up. Oh yes, you're right. Well then, see you around, you helpless housekeeper who's only an ATM for me. <laughs> hey, hey, wait! Then, they drove off to the hotel, as the two said that to me. Why? What did I even do to them? I've always, always done everything for them. Do they really enjoy tormenting and bullying me that much? From the depths of my heart, the thoughts that I have been holding back all these years began to well up. The daily events that Kevin and his mother had been subjecting to me since our marriage coincided with this incident, and tears welled up in my eyes, and I felt just really sad about what had happened. What on earth am I going to do without a car in these mountains? <sighs> I was at a loss for what to do, but then I thought of something. Well, it can't be helped, right? It's a big dinner show, and I'm sorry to cause everyone in trouble, but... I wiped my tears and took out my phone to call my best friend Tessa, who was also my colleague at work about my current situation, and asked her to pick me up. Oh, Natalie! Are you okay? Come on, get in the back quickly. I got on the motorcycle that Tessa came to pick me up with. Oh, Natalie, you've been through a lot. Let's give them a hell for being so cruel and inhumane to you, Natalie. I'll help you too. Thanks so much, Tessa. I'm going to make those two pay back double for what they've done to me this whole time. We immediately headed for the hotel and Tessa completely drove ahead of Kevin's car. On the way to the hotel, we planned our strategy. About an hour later, Kevin and Mary had arrived to the dinner show venue. I'm looking forward to tonight's dinner show. Yes, indeed, me too. Oh, I wanted to go with you, Mom, because I heard a very famous celebrity was coming to the dinner show. Well, it's all thanks to Natalie for paying for our tickets. As they were having a conversation like this, all the lights went out at once, and the main stage was lit up. But the person who appeared on stage was not the famous celebrity, and it was Tessa. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming today. I will be your MC for today's event. My name is Tessa. Now, please sit back and relax and enjoy the dinner show. Then, as Tessa says this, the dinner show began. The famous celebrity showed up on the stage and all the audience was cheering and buzzing with delight. Next, please enjoy this clip. As Tessa says this, a huge screen comes down on the main stage and a clip is shown. Oh, Natalie, the bill for living expenses came here. Please hurry up and pay it as soon as possible. And please make sure to buy more daily necessities like laundry detergents, soaps, shampoos, and food. Oh, I thought you and Kevin were supposed to also pay for the living expenses. What are you saying? We have taken you in as Kevin's wife and we are letting you live here as our family. So it's only natural that you should be the one to pay all of that. Besides, it's a housewife's job to buy all the groceries, isn't it? Oh, don't tell me that you're asking me to do it. I... I understand. Hey, Natalie, fill up the car with gas. Oh, and do the laundry too. Natalie, will you go to the supermarket and get some groceries? Hurry up with the meal. Come on, I'm starving.
Natalie, I have to go out tomorrow, so can you lend me some money? It's fine, right? You have enough money saved up, don't you? Just give me the money. If you don't obey me, you can leave this house right now, you know? All the images shown on the big screen are the daily treatment I received by Kevin and Mary from the time of our marriage until now. Hey, what's airing right now is... How horrible! W what the hell is happening here? Why the hell is our daily footage being shown on here? And why was it even being recorded on camera in the first place? Oh, don't ask me. I, I don't know either. Hey, stop this right now. Actually, I have been frequently discussing the happenings at home with my best friend Tessa. She had advised me to gather evidence in case of emergencies, and I had been recording the bullyings I'd receive on my phone on a regular basis. Of course, I have my phone with me today, so I decided to use this occasion to show the recordings I had to the audience. Thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This clip that was just shown is actually recorded by my colleague and one of my best friend, who got treated like that from her own husband, Kevin, and her mother-in-law, Mary, on a regular basis. As Tessa says that, the spotlight goes on to Kevin and Mary at the same time. The people around began to buzz even more. And, plus, they dumped and left her into the forest just to come to this dinner show today. How terrible can people be, am I right? I can't believe he and Mary would treat his own wife and her own daughter-in-law like that. I can't believe it either. I pity her so much. The whole venue was buzzing with talks of Kevin and Mary. Thank you all very much for your kind attention. And to Kevin and Mary, I would like to declare to get a divorce with you, Kevin, here today. So, thank you very much for what you both have done to me until now. To that, the audience cheered and applauded. Perhaps, unable to bear the atmosphere any longer, Kevin and Mary ran away and left the place. Ah! How could Natalie do this to us? How could this be? Damn it! After that, our divorce was settled. And I also filed a claim against Kevin and Mary for my emotional distress they caused me. I packed up my belongings, left the house, and temporarily stayed at my best friend Tessa's house. After the divorce was finalized, Kevin and Mary said that their routine acts, which were played on the big screen in front of many people, became known around in the neighborhood and was also rumored at Kevin's workplace. The two also could no longer live in the neighborhood and had a hard time finding a better place to live on their own. Of course, because of that incident and all the rumors around Kevin, he was fired from his job. Rumor has it that they can't even manage their finances now and are on the verge of bankruptcy. I am glad to hear that they are both having a hard time living without a person like me, who was their housekeeper ATM. Thank you so much for your help, Tessa. I should be the one thanking you. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm really glad that you're okay now, Natalie. I shouldn't have even trusted people like them in the first place. I'm really sorry for all the worries and I'll reflect back on the mistakes I made this time. When you're in trouble, you don't have to face it alone, you know. That's what friends are for. If you ever need help, you can always count on me. Thank you so much, Tessa. I am truly saved by having a wonderful best friend like you. After this, we talked a lot about the dinner show. A week later, I told the company where I used to work for about what had happened and returned back to work as they wanted to hire me again. Tessa and I are both single and decided to share the house. We are having a good time while looking for the right person for each other. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.